All right, I'm about to blow your mind right now. This right here is the all new Jiayun Crane M3 with my Sony FX3 and a shotgun mic on top. This is my PGY Tech Mantis pod with an A7R4. And look at them in size. We're about to talk about the M3 today. Let's get into it. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Desmond and I make content for creators that wanna take better photos and shoot better videos. And today I am probably the most excited I've been in a while because I've got my hands on a brand new Jiayun Crane M3. And this thing honestly does not disappoint. The size and the payload it is able to hold, man, I'm so excited to talk about this. All right, first, let's just talk about what this thing is, right? It is a motorized gimbal designed for, I'd say mirrorless full frames, but mostly it's gonna work best with smaller APS-C cameras and like point and shoot cameras like the ZV-1. But I will tell you that having tested this with my Sony FX3 with the 35 millimeter G Master, with my 85 millimeter Batis, and my 20 millimeter F1.8 G lens, this thing can really hold a usable full frame payload. And the nice thing about this gimbal being able to hold this payload means that anything smaller is going to fit like a glove and is going to work beautifully. Because even with this setup, with the 35 millimeter G Master and my Sony shotgun mic on top, I'm able to have this thing perfectly balanced and the motors do a great job of keeping everything steady. All right, so first let's start talking about the build quality of the Jiayun Crane M3. Most of this is made out of plastic, probably what keeps it so light and small. The arms obviously have metal parts, but I think overall the finish is really well done. There's a lot of small, things here that show attention to detail. This feels like a very premium product, especially for the lighter price tag. I paid about 369 before tax. And in all honesty, I really love the design aesthetic of this. Very Stormtrooper-esque, as a lot of people have said. Uh, you've got a texturized rubber grip here. These knobs and these wheels feel really well done. There's a good amount of feedback. And the joystick on the back, feels fine. A few things I specifically want to call out is these axis locks. So now each of the axes has their own individual locks, which is great because when you're balancing a gimbal, now you can lock each of the individual pieces while you're getting it done. And those locks are made of metal. They click really well. They feel secure. So when I'm walking around with my gimbal, in lock mode with my heavy expensive camera on here, I still feel pretty secure. And I will say that this is a step up in quality from the Crane M2, which is a slightly smaller gimbal with a much lower payload threshold. That thing was only able to hold my Sony ZV-1 and it was never able to hold something as heavy or robust as my Sony FX3, especially with a 35 millimeter lens and a shotgun mic on top. Let's quickly run through some of the features that come with this gimbal. And I'm not gonna go through everything in depth because there are a ton of YouTube videos that have been out for a month now that have just gone through all the individual modes. But like I've said in my gimbal reviews before, this is a gimbal, it has one job, it stabilizes the camera. So really it can't get that fancy. You've got pan follow mode, follow mode, you've got vortex POV go, which allows you to just move very quickly and makes the gimbal a lot more sensitive in the movements. And that's really it. You can double tap to recenter your gimbal. You triple tap to turn it around to selfie mode. And the selfie mode is actually something I'm gonna be using a lot more because with this much smaller setup, I would love to try to do a lot more vlogging with this. And let me show you something for a size comparison, right? This is the PGY Tech Mantis Pod. I absolutely love this vlogging tripod because it's tiny, it's very light, and it folds up really well for travel. Now look at this next to my Crane M3. It is crazy how small it is. I'm sure you've seen a lot of videos where people are comparing this gimbal to other gimbals, but look at this compared to a handheld tripod that is supposed to be designed for like on the go vlogging. They are 
almost the same height. It is absolutely insane. So the best part about it is that holding something like this feels about the same as holding something like this with my camera on it. Albeit the gimbal is obviously heavier, but in all honesty, it doesn't make that big of a difference to me, especially the way that I like to do my vlogging, right? Occasionally I will do the handheld walk and talk, but a lot of the times I like to place my tripod down in different places, get different angles. Again, when you've got the gimbal, you just use the joystick to adjust the angle and the tilt of the camera. And again, with the M3 being about the same height as my PGY Tech Mantis pod, I get, it, I get the same camera height that I would normally get. So actually I've just been using this around in lock mode as a stationary tripod. And when I wanna whip it out into gimbal mode, I just unlock the three axes and turn it on. And then I've got super stabilized footage uh, I can do B-roll, I can do walking and talking vlog style stuff, but it is kind of cool how versatile this is, especially the fact that it can handle the additional weight of the shotgun mic. And I will say for some of you that don't care for walking and talking and doing gimbal vlog style stuff, you don't need to put the shotgun mic on top, right? You can throw on a wireless go to slap that onto your subject while you're tracking them. You can put a shotgun mic on the side using the quarter 20 mount with maybe a hot shoe adapter. There are a number of things that you can do with this tiny little gimbal that you just could not with the previous generation. And again, because of the advancements in technology, the power of these motors and those advancements give us the payload that a lot of us really wanted from the M2. Right? It's like, I know a lot of you that are watching are using an A7 III, maybe you've got the new A7 IV, the S3, maybe an FX3. Those are incredible cameras. And I think the downside of a gimbal for a camera of that size always meant you had to get a Ronin, something just so large and just uncomfortable to carry around, which was the biggest turnoff for me when it came to gimbals. Which is why I bought the M2, hoping that maybe I could push it to handle the weight, but it didn't. And it was helpful for my ZV-1. But again, now that I've actually got a gimbal here that works with my full frame setup, I'm very, very happy. All right, and for the FX3, now that I've removed the shotgun mic, you actually have full clearance for the top of the camera. And that, whoo, is gonna give you some incredible, incredible B-roll and footage. So it's just amazing how tiny this little guy is, and the fact that it can hold my FX3 and my G Master. So this is amazing for something this small to be able to handle a payload, which I would consider relatively heavy. I will say that the lenses I will most likely be using my gimbal with is the 20 millimeter F 1.8 G lens. That's gonna be my walking, talking, vlogging style if I do a lot of gimbal stuff like that. And my 55 millimeter F 1.8 Sony lens, which is incredibly tiny and will handle this absolutely no problem. The 35, maybe the 85, probably not as often, but I wanted to throw those lenses on and test the capacity so that I could let you know that they do in fact work very well. And what you're seeing here is my gimbal off right now. So this is really all balanced for the most part. If I throw the mic on top, it's gonna to give it this, that little bit to balance it out. But this is incredible. This is not something you could have done a couple years ago with something this tiny. So I'm really, really impressed with how far Jayun has come with their gimbals. All right, and for the most part, that is the functionality of the gimbal. It holds good weight, it stabilizes the footage. So a couple things that I wanna talk about now is like portability and whether or not this will fit in my smallest backpack. Here's a nice little feature I'm just gonna call out is Jayun's new quick release locking mechanism. The one downside that I will call out now is, man, I really still hate these gimbal plates. You've got the little knob that attaches your gimbal plate to your camera. Yes, I know Jayun makes those custom uh, quick release plates for the A7S 3 and some of the other popular models. Well, they don't make one for the FX3. It doesn't matter though. I still wouldn't use those because all of my cameras use an Arca Swiss compatible bottom plate that works with my Peak Design Travel tripod, my Mantis pod, my capture clips. Jayun really needs to get on the bandwagon and create a Arca Swiss compatible quick release plate. Uh, I even tried to purchase the PGY Tech quick release system 
and mount that to this plate, but it ends up being a little bit too heavy. So we're either just gonna have to wait for Jayin to release one, or more than likely, Small Rig will come out with another one just like they did for the M2. And that is the last piece that I'm waiting for because I hate, hate, hate the idea of having to remove my Arca Swiss plate, put this plate on, throw that on here. It just, it just adds this extra step that I don't have with any of my other tripods or my like quick release accessories. All right, now that I'm done ranting, I'm just gonna show you how compact this truly is because the other thing I haven't really seen from a lot of reviews is people sticking these into backpacks. For reference, 15 liter Peak Design Everyday Zip. This is a tiny, tiny backpack. This is my baby backpack that I carry my everyday like camera gear in. And here we've got the Crane M3. I'm gonna place it right in here. And then the best thing is, look at that. I still have space for top compartment and the other side where I can carry my A7R4. I usually carry my FX3 with a shotgun mic on top. Look at how beautiful this is, man. Look at that. Are you serious? Are you seeing this right now? Look at how tiny this gimbal is. Are you crazy? Look at that. That's a PGY Tech Mantis pod. This is a compact tripod. Look at this. You know what, if I wanted, I could carry both my tripods in here and I might do that. All right, look at that. Surprise, I've got a gimbal in here for my full frame mirrorless setup and I can fit another pocket tripod in here. This is nuts. Look at how small this is. And then the best thing, again, I love this backpack. You can watch my review on it. I've got these additional pockets so I could just stuff a bunch of things in here like a GoPro and just other stuff that just won't bother my gimbal at all. It is perfectly safe. I've got all three accesses locked. You could never do this with another gimbal that could hold this payload last year. So this is mind blowing and this makes me very, very happy as a creator. All right, and let's keep the test going, right? Because I'm just feeling good right now. Look at this, FX3, boom. Just shove that right in there. So I've got my FX3, I've got my gimbal, I've got my tripod. On the other side, I've got an A7R4, and I still got pockets for all kinds of crazy stuff that I wanna bring. This is absurd, and it just really blows my mind how small this whole setup is. This is the smallest backpack in the Peak Design line, 15 liters, and I can fit this whole gimbal and two camera bodies in here. What a time to be alive. All right, so with all of that said, I'm obviously really happy about this. The question is whether or not you should go out and spend $400 on this tiny little gimbal. For me, the answer was a very easy yes, because when I think about my FX3, this is my primary video shooting setup. It's not gonna get more heavy than this because I'm not looking to get a larger body. It does great for the type of work that I wanna do. But I also didn't want to go and get a professional gimbal just to hold the weight of that camera. Uh, the Ronins are awesome. They are incredible, but they are hard to pack around. They just look aggressive and they look intimidating when you're using them out in public. This kind of looks like a little toy, right? Especially with my FX3 on top of it, it is about the same size as my FX3 with my Mantis pod. And when I saw that size comparison, it just really clicked for me how well the M3 is going to fit into my workflow and the way that I like to use my equipment. So I will say if you are upgrading from the M2, totally worth it. Say you're even new to gimbals and this is like your first gimbal purchase. This is a great entry level gimbal that holds a lot of weight and does a lot of the things these higher end gimbals do. And for the most part, if this is your first gimbal, you're probably not rocking like an FX6 or some massive cinema camera. So you don't really need anything bigger. I really enjoy the build quality, the convenience, and just how compact it is. The three axis locking mechanisms are really, really helpful, especially when just packing this thing away. And like you saw, man, this fits in my smallest backpack, which for the most part will probably fit in one of my sling bags. So I'm very happy about that. I would say this is a buy for me. All right, and with that said, that is my review of the Crane M3. I will catch y'all in the next one.